Okay, so today we're going to take a look at Graphviz. And what Graphviz is, is a graph visualization software. So what you can do with Graphviz is you can take nodes, you can define your nodes, you can define your edges. And what Graphviz does for you is it generates from those nodes and edges a picture that you can look at uh, visually. And the reason why you want to do that is because sometimes when, you when you're looking at data, it's kind of hard to see the relationships between your data points. You can uh, have it so that you can explain to other people how certain things interact in your program or how certain things interact in just nature in general. Anyways, let's actually get started with this. Most likely when you use Graphviz, you're going to make one of two graphs, either a directed graph or an undirected graph. And the difference between the two is fairly simple. A directed graph has directed edges, an undirected graph doesn't have directed edges, and that's pretty much it. So for example, if I want to make an undirected graph, I would type graph and then give it some name. I'm just going to call it G. And we are going to define a node in a relation in this graph. So let's say we have a node A, and this A is connected to B. So there we go. We have our first relation A is connected to B by an undirected edge. Then we're going to close this and we're going to save our Graphviz file. So now how do we actually render out that picture? And we render out that picture using the dot command. So we're going to type dot followed by the argument t png and I'm specifying t png because I want to make a png file. If you want to make any other format, look at the man page and see the appropriate command for that. Uh, file format. And we have to specify the Graphviz uh, data file. So our Graphviz data file is g.gv. And we are going to output to a file called file.png. Now, the, when we do that, we're going to use our image viewer to view that file. So we're going to look at file.png. And as you can see, here we have our graph. We have A, which is connected to B, and B is connected to A. And that is the first graph that you made. Congratulations. Now, to make a directed graph, we can go in here and we can change the graph to a digraph. Now, digraph, I think, stands for directional graph or directed graph. And to make a directed edge, we are going to basically uh, change this character here to this greater than sign. And now what we're what we're telling graph is, is A is connected to B by this directed edge. And if we save that and we run that same command again, we can see now that A is connected to B and there is a clear flow from A to B instead of just being undirected. Now, we can also have multiple nodes. So for example, if we want, we can have A be connected to C, and then we can have B being connected to C also. And if we run that, we see that now we have A is connected to B, and then B is connected to C, and A is also connected to C. Now, here's the thing. We see here that A is connected to B, and A is also connected to C. We can actually avoid typing out multiple lines like this by having A connect to B and C on a single line. You have a shorthand for defining which nodes are connected to which nodes. So we can say A is going to be connected to both um, B and C. And if we save that and we generate our file again, we see that we get the same uh, end graph but we had to write one less line. And this is actually really convenient. And you can also do this on both sides. Let's say you want to make a graph where nodes A, B, and C are connected nodes D, E, and F. We can do that on one line in Graphviz. So in Graphviz, to do that, um, to make that graph, all we type is A and C. And then we're going to make a directional uh, relation with this to the nodes. And if we make this file, as you can see, a graph of is connected all of these things for us automatically. So instead of having to define a connection for each node, 
we can just use that shorthand to connect the multiple nodes together. Okay, now that we have this graph on our screen, we see that it's not really that impressive. And it's not impressive because it's all the same color and the only difference between the nodes are uh, their uh, basically contents, like what they're called is A, B, C, D, E, F. We can actually style these nodes. Now to style these nodes, we have to specify a node style and we specify a node style like this. We type node and then we are going to set the style to be filled and we're going to set the color of these nodes to be uh, yellow. So if we save this and run our program again, we see that the nodes in our graph are all yellow now. We can also do the same for the edges. So if we want, we can style these edges uh, to be, uh, let's make them dotted, and we're gonna set their color to be red. And now we have, uh, we have a graph that has yellow nodes and it has the dotted edges, which are directional. Now we can also we can also edit the shape of our nodes. So for example, uh, we can say that the shape of our nodes is going to be um, square. And if we run this, we see that our nodes are square now. Now here's the thing: um, you can actually style these nodes individually, and I'm going to make this a little smaller so you guys can see the whole thing without it being squished like that. So in this graph, we can specify an individual node and we can specify a style for this individual node. So have A, and I want to style this uh, A node, and I want to set its uh, color to be red. I can specify color is red. If we run this, we see that now individually A is red. We can do the same for B if you want. We can say B color is blue. And uh, you can just go on forever with this kind of styling. I think you can even have, um, you can even use HTML styling in the styles so you can build a really sophisticated looking nodes. Okay, so let's make a new type of graph. We're going to make a new graph which isn't going to be that sophisticated, actually. It's going to be pretty much what we have now. It's just that I want to show you a problem that you may face when you use uh, graphes. So, for example, let's say I have um, I have the node A, and it's connected to B, and A is also connected to C. It's also connected to D, and it's also connected to F. It's also connected to G, and it's also connected to H. And if we run this and we make this graph, uh, you may start to see a problem here. And the problem is that this node, well, should I say, graph is, isn't really making a good use of its space. So for example, you don't really want to have uh, graphes spread out your nodes like this. So with A being at the top and then having uh, everything else below it, maybe you want to have it uh, in a circular pattern or something. And this is something that can really get to you if you're making a lot, if you're making a graph with a lot of nodes. And you can fix this by setting layout to be neato. So we can say layout is equal to neato. And when we run this, we can see that a graph is, is now making better use of the space available to it. So if you were ever making a graph and you're getting this problem where uh, graph is, is basically uh, laying out all of your nodes on one row, uh, you can actually change the layout style to try to fix that problem. Okay, so now that we have the basics of a graph of us down, I'm going to show you a little script that I made to uh, basically, it's going to take all of the links on a website and it's going to graph them in relation to the uh, website itself. Okay, so this is my script. It's uh, fairly simple. All it's doing is it's taking the first argument to be um, a website. I'm not really doing any checking on this because this is my script and I don't really intend to uh, put it out there for general use. But basically what I'm doing is I'm getting a URL and then I'm doubly getting that URL and I'm parsing out all of the, I'm parsing out all of the uh, 
links on that site. So on a single page, you're getting all of the links out of it. Then I'm just uh, TRing and sorting to make sure that it's uh, unique. Like all the, all the links are unique because you don't want to just have uh, duplicate uh, nodes in your uh, graph. That'd be kind of annoying. Then I'm echoing into uh, outfile.gv this string, which basically indicates that this is a directional graph. And then um, I have a couple of options set here. So my uh, layout style is FDP and my overlap is false. Uh, I set overlap to false because uh, if you have a website with a lot of um, with a lot of nodes and edges, uh, then you can have problems with uh, overlapping nodes and edges to the point where you can't even uh, read your graph anymore. Uh, but I think it increases the time it takes to render the graph too. So it's it has kind of like a trade-off. Then what I'm doing is I'm looping over every link. And for every link, um, I'm echoing into out file.gv the original website so my website and then the whatever link it has to whatever other website and finally closing we have a, a squiggly bracket and we render it out as the final line in the script now this is uh, pretty simple it's not really meant to be anything impressive but uh, this is uh, the kind of stuff that you can do with graphics so to run this script I'm going to use my own website, uh, but you can use whatever you want, I think. And here we go. We have this picture. This is my website, and here are all the links on that website. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope that this was very informative to you, and uh, thanks for watching.